So today we have in our Bible a scholarly revision of a great error that's taught that is found in your modern Bibles. Even my old Schofield Bible, which I had to white out, has today's error. And if you turn to Mark chapter 10, and you got to look at it and say, how ignorant can these scholars in religion be? And it's not ignorance, my friend. It's perverting the Bible so they can get into heaven. Because they're not. So what they do is they devise a scholarly thought that God surely would approve, and he doesn't. And they think they're doing well. That's the deception. So we have here in verse number 17, and when he was going forth into the way, there came one running hastily and kneeled before him, Respect, title, and asked him, good master. So what this young man is doing is he's treating God who is Jesus. He's teaching, he's, he's, he's stretching himself out like one of his teachers. Like one of the priests, one of the Pharisees. You would, you would come up, you would bow down, and you would say, master. This is the kind of thing that you find in the Orient. Master. And they bow down before. They, they got that, that Chinese bow. They don't bow all the way, but they do, they do that bow. And it's not that to this young man that Jesus is God. No, it's, it's a respect of a title. And then Jehovah Witnesses will run to this verse. We'll see. He called, you know, called no man good, only God. This young man is not at all approaching Jesus as God. And you will learn he will not honor God and God's way. So Jesus, knowing all men, being God, is going to approach this man on this man's belief. I mean, I'm surely not going to talk how to bake a, and ice a cake to my auto mechanic. I'm not going to ask my pastor to ascribe to me the lesson of thermodynamics. I am not going to sit down with a dinner that's pork and eat it like a steak. Neither are you going to cook it as such. So what the young man is doing is he, he bows before him. He says, Master, he does not say Lord. It's a title of respect that to this man, Jesus is just another man with a title. That's your religion. You got religion where, you know, he's a priest. He's a pope. He's a cardinal, he's a pastor, he's an elder. And this this all the religious titles that is given to man for the honor to say, Oh, look at me. If there's one thing that aggravates me in this world, 
is one thing, well, many things do, but one of the things that aggravated me is you will give an honorary degree. You will hand that man a piece of paper, honorary, and he's never worked, he's never done the study, he is never equal to somebody who has gone through all the classes, all the courses, all the tests, earn that de that degree, that di that diploma, or whatever it be. So he's addressing Jesus. I feel like I got to sneeze. As official man, not official God. There you go, Mr. Jehovah Witness. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Oh, boy. Somebody came up to me. This Father, what must I do to, to inherit eternal life? Number one, do not tell them today what Jesus tells this man. And so you see, well, you know what Jesus said? You know, keep the commandments, blah, 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 works. Yeah, but we're in a, dis we're in a different dispensation. Christ has not died. Christ has not risen from the dead. There is no church. He's talking to a Jewish person. Nowhere has it been said to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And yet today, somebody came up to me, so what must I do to be saved? What must I do to get eternal life? What must I do to go to heaven? My answer would be, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acknowledge the fact is that you are a sinner all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and you need Jesus Christ alone, the way, the truth, and the life. You need to be born again. I am not going to tell him keep one commandment at all. Now, I have dealt with people. I have... To show them that they are a sinner, which you have to. You can't lead a man to Calvary if he's not a sinner. He's not going to get saved unless he acknowledges his sin. Now, I will point out three commandments. Honor thy father and mother, thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. I will say, have you ever lied? Have you ever called out from work sick and you were never sick? I say, well, there you go. You you bear false witness. You're a sinner. Have you ever taken a paper clip? Have you ever taken a pen? Have you ever gone home with something that was not yours and was not given to you? Okay, now you're a thief. There is two sins. Now, I am assured that you were the most perfect child ever, and you never give your father and mother any troubles, any problems. You were just, well, no. Okay, that's, that's three sins right there. You're a sinner. Now, only one man argued with me, because he was never a sinner. But So, don't tell anybody, if they ask how to be saved, what, what Jesus told this man because it's out of dispensation. So he says, Jesus had said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And the Jehovah Witness will quote that to you. And I will tell Mr. Jehovah Witness or Mrs. Jehovah Witness. This man doesn't believe Jesus is God. This man doesn't even believe in God. He just wants to go to heaven. There are people who want to go to heaven. But they don't want to worship God. There are people who want to go into paradise. But they don't want to worship Jesus. They think when they get to heaven. Oh we're going to glorify them. No we're going to glorify Jesus Christ. You are not in the picture. Your pastor is not in the picture. Your great church is not in the picture. It's about Jesus. I mean, we're all going to be wearing the same white robes. We're all going to be about 30 years old looking like Jesus. 
He's the one that's marred. He's the one that bears the scars. You're not there for me, and I'm not there for you. So, Mr. Jehovah Witness, the very fact is, this guy does not acknowledge Jesus as God, as you do. Not. So, he's like you, and he's not there to please God, like Mr. Jehovah Witness doesn't please God. He wants a position. He wants to follow the rules of religion, which is not going to get you in heaven. Thou knowest the commandments. Thou shalt do no. Thou shalt not commit adultery. All right. We don't even know if the guy's married. Do not kill. Oh, there's a Jehovah Witnesses. And yet God told Israel over and over and over through Joshua, through David. Go in there, wipe them out. Go in there, kill them. Go in there, destroy them. Go in there, just totally... Wait a minute, what do you do with that one? Mr. Jehovah Witness, thou shalt not kill. So we're not going to do military. Then get out of America. In the name of our religion, we're not going to do certain things. Well, get out. You're a religious coward. And you tell them I said that. There's a difference between military orders of going to war and then taking a gun or knife or a rock to your neighbor and taking their life. Paul says in Romans 13, you're to obey the powers that be. And when the government sends you a letter and says you are called to duty, you are being drafted, you get your butt down to the draft board and you choose Navy, Army, Marines, or Air Force or Coast Guard. Don't go run away. There are plenty of jobs you can do in the military. You don't have to kill anybody. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. The Jehovah Witnesses bear false witness as soon as they open up their mouth. I tell you what I tell the Jehovah Witnesses. Thomas said, my Lord, my God, so Jesus is God. Look, 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 look. Hey, listen, you explain to me. Well, it says over there. No, you explain to me in John where Thomas says, my Lord, my God, speaking to Jesus, and there's no rebuke. Well, we, you know, we, no, you explain that because you're a liar. Defraud not. Well, there, they, there you go, Jehovah's Witnesses. In religion, religion, they bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. So that, that's not a complete commandment list. And he, the rich young ruler, answered and said unto him, Jesus, Master, there's the title, no Lord, no Jesus, no God, no Jehovah. All these things I have kept from my youth. That's pretty remarkable. Now, let's stop there for a moment again. Like I said, Thomas said, my Lord, my God, there's no rebuke. There is no rebuke in Matthew, Mark, or Luke about this Richard. Jesus says, no, wait a minute, young man. You're telling a little fib there. This man, like Job, is remarkable. He is born, raised right. He is doing right. His teachers have taught him right. And he'll die and go to hell. He's got the right parents. Dies and goes to hell. He's got the right schooling. He dies to go to hell. He is speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll die and go to hell. 
And he's living a moral life. And he's going to die and go to hell. If he does not ever in his life come to Jesus and put his faith and belief in Jesus, who is God. You know, there are many people in church, seminaries, colleges, temples, all over the world. And those may spend their entire life, maybe from infancy, up in that environment. And they've done the rules and the regulations of that religion properly. They may even learn Bible verses. They may even have Sunday school. They may even have VBS. And maybe Christian camp. And there are some of those who will die and go to hell. Because they were doers of religion. And not doers of the word to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. My friend, if the rapture were to happen and there was a church service, you would be surprised how many people would be still in that church after the rapture. And I'm telling you right now, there will be some pastors, some Sunday school teachers that will also be left behind. You think every preacher is saved. You're full. 1 Corinthians 11, I believe it is. Jesus behold, beholding him loved him. Now there's no rebuke. And he, look at this. This young man comes up to Jesus and the Holy Spirit records for us that Jesus loves that young man. But he's dead wrong. And right now in this point of life, he is going to hell and Jesus knows it. My friend, Christian friend, have you ever dealt with someone that come up to you, they're dead wrong in a religion, they're going to hell, and you love them? Maybe you get into rebuke because you love them, and you're going to tell them what they need to do to be saved? Do you love them? And said unto him, One thing thou lackest, to go thy way, and whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven. You know what commandment is missing? Coveting. This man's rich. And Jesus says, here's the commandments. Mine is coveting. He goes, I've done that. And in order to be rich, you've got to be coveting. You've got to be looking at things. You've got to monitor the stock market. You've got to see, you know, which gems, which silvers, which bedding, which, what's the Chinese market doing? What's Gee, if I had that car and the value of that car will be what in 10 years? Or this house, what will the value be? What? And you've got a lot of different things to be rich, to be coveting. Jesus left that one out. He wanted this man to acknowledge, hey, listen, I'm okay, I'm good. Thank you very much. Do we all get applaud for me? Ah. Uh... And the Bible records that before Jesus drops the bomb of this man's sin, it records that Jesus loved him. 
Jesus loved loved him enough to say, "Okay, you're you're good and honor your parents. You're good. You never stole anything. Hey, you're rich and you never stole anything. You never bear false way. Amen. Glory to God. That means, listen, you are a rich man properly, but you got your eyes. Paul in the book of Romans, I believe, chapter seven, would say that lust is coveting, and coveting is lust." In the market to be rich, you got to look at many things. You got to look at the values, and you got to say, "Oh, I got to have that." I mean, what if they came out with this big diamond necklace? And you would say, "Oh, I got to have that." Oh, you're coveting. So, in love, Jesus drops the sinful bomb of, "This is what your sin is." So he says, take your stuff, give it to the poor. And don't get the tax form. Don't claim it on your taxes. Go help those poor people. And, and you know what? There could be poor people around them because he's got multitudes. These people need help. These people need clothing. These people need rent. Today, we, we need rent help. While the rich people are getting richer with, with the high rents and all that, we can use some help. Drop their rents down. Lower your utility fees. Get some fruit from them. Get some food for them. Thou shalt treasure in heaven. Now, after you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, your works go to heaven. Whatever you do for Jesus Christ after Calvary, after you've been born again, after you put your faith and trust in Jesus for the Christian, what you do for Jesus goes to heaven, and it, 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 it's processed in gold, silver, precious stones, and crowns as reward and an inheritance. That's not a means of salvation today. Listen, you give money to a missionary, you give man, money to a homeless person in the name of Jesus. You give, maybe buy a meal for somebody who's hungry. You, you put money in, in the church plate for somebody that needs help in the church. That goes up for gold, silver, precious stones in the heavenly bank for Christians. That's a heavenly reward. After you have believed and put your faith and trust in Jesus. And he tells them, listen, go help the poor and you can build a bank account, bank account in heaven. Come. Jesus says to him, come. In order to come with Jesus, well, look, he's following 12 men. Four of them are fishermen. One guy is a tax collector. And he's got these multitude of people. They, in certain cases that we've read already, they couldn't even feed themselves. And you're telling this rich young ruler, leave everything behind that you got, your friends, your status. Maybe your family. And come and follow me. Friend, today in the church age, and we're not gonna we're not gonna ask you as Christians to go live in a cave, go climb the highest mountain, go live on the on the ground the bare ground and no, we're not telling you to be a monk. Or a peasant. 
even to get a Christian today of the church present time to get a Christian to follow and get up and go follow Jesus. It don't happen. You know, they say many go the Broadway, which is into hell, and many Christians who won't go to hell won't get heaven rewards in heaven because they don't do nothing for Jesus. So this man at this time with the, with the, with the multitude following Jesus, and Jesus has no house, he has no place to lay his head at times. Four fishermen, and I grew up with lobstermen. You know, they're battling, fighting, and all that. And to tell this rich young, young ruler, and he's looking at their clothes, and he's looking at them, and that's awfully hard for him to give up his treasures, give to the poor. Now, come. Take up the cross. Now, he hasn't gone to the cross yet. He's saying, take a, listen, hardship, death. That's what the cross meant. The cross meant a tortured death. All the apostles, except for John, suffered a tormental death. But John, the apostle, was not without torture. He died of old age, but still he had his torture. This rich young ruler, if he would have gave up the poor, this stuff to the poor, if he would come, if he would take up his cross, he would be listed in Fox's book of martyrs among the apostles and a tortured death. Dying uncrucified, being torn between two bees, being axed to death, being beheaded. You don't want that. He's come to Jesus for, hey, there's nothing higher right now to say, I've got the Jesus diploma. I've got a title given to me by Jesus. Jesus told me I can go to heaven. Got, what do you guys got? You don't even like Jesus. Well, he spoke to me. Yeah, he spoke to you. He told you what sin you're doing. He told you what to do to your question. How can I get eternal life? And he says, you know what? You got to do works. Right now, in this dispensation, you got to do works. And he's like, there was a phrase growing up for me, when you had the low income, I'm going to say, it, I'm not saying it, but I'm going to say it, uh, the scum of the earth. And there would be an expression to be those people. It's wrong. But that's what it was called. That's what this rich man is like. You want me to hang out with those people? Those 12 men and this multitude? You want me to give up everything I have? And listen, I, I, I drink the best wine. I got the best clothes. I go to the best party. I'm known by the best people. Some people believe that this man evidently turns out to get saved, and he's actually the Apostle Paul. That's what some people believe. I've heard the messages, and it could be. And he would get saved later on. But right now, we, we don't know who he is. And, and, and if he's rich, and he's got this gala of friends. And Jesus tells him, give it all up. Come and take up your cross. And he would have been a laughingstock of his friends. Now, never mind the fact is that... Uh, Nicodemus is a follower of Jesus. Joseph of Armenia, a rich man, 
builds his own tomb, is a rich man. J.C. Penny, the owner of the J.C. Penny stores, was a was a saved man, and he gave you Sundays off. Now J.C. Penny today is way away from that of Jesus Christ. There have been rich men who are saved. There has been royalty, kings and queens. Queen Victoria is saved. And they were allowed by God to still have that prestige of their wealth. And if you can handle it, and it's hard for the love of money. Some people, God gives money, and it just blows their mind. There are people who win the lotteries, and they get all this money, and years down the road, they end up bankrupt. Even worse condition before they had that lottery ticket. And follow me. Well, for the rich man, that's a big step. First of all, he doesn't eat Mr. Job away. This first of all, he doesn't even believe who Jesus is or what Jesus is about. He just wants another religious way to get into heaven by the approval of this man walking around, healing and do what he does. That he could go back to the Sanhedrin and say, I've been Jesus Christ approved. I mean, I've heard some preachers, they, they say, you know, out of context, touch not my anointing and do my prophet. That ain't you. I had one preacher one time, and we were thinking about starting a church after my, after my school. I was still in school. And he de-churched me, and I didn't get permission from him to even be thinking, man, shut up. You're not even in the ministry today. You retired. So, then he was sad at that saying, and went away, he left, grieved, for he had great possessions. He was rich. And at the work of, hey, give it up, come, take up your cross, follow me, Jesus is standing there, and he sees the back of this man walking away. That's sad. And many years that I have witnessed to people, whatever ministry I've done, the saddest thing is that when you're dealing with somebody and, and, and you're given the opportunity to witness to them, you're given the opportunity to talk with them. I'm talking about reasonably. And we're not fighting. We're arguing. He's listening. I'm listening. And then when you see them walk away and they don't put their faith and trust in Jesus, at that only thing you can do is, Lord God, please. That was the seed planting. Someone watered that. And then you're sad. I've got family that walked away like this man, and they're dead now, and I only think they're in hell. And there's nothing I can do. I've already done what... See, Jesus has already done what he could for this man. This is what you need to do. And the man turns around and walks away. And you're going to find many that will do that when you go out to live for Christ, they're going to turn around and walk away. And Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches, they're rich, enter in the kingdom of heaven. Now, it is not impossible. Okay? Like I said, J.C. Penny was rich. 
There's been many a rich man or woman. There's been a many high standard man or, or man or woman. There's been a plenty of kings and queens. They have been saved and served the Lord Jesus Christ. But hardly if you were to take today a rich person who's saved, all right, and you put him up against all the rich people, okay, and you put him in the classification of all the rich people that are saved. To all the rich people. Okay, you might have a margin there. How about if you were to take a rich, saved man or woman. They read their Bible. They go to church. They witness. And they try to live their life to Jesus Christ. And the standards of the Bible. And of God. Man, you got a tiny sum. A rich people were just saved. Amongst all the rich people in the world. You take a church. Right? A Bible believing church. There's a lot of people there. The pastor and the Sunday school teachers. And, and, and the people that fill the, the, feel the put pews. Wives and husbands and children. And single people. And the very old and the very young. And. Among few of those people in the church, are they saved and going to heaven? There's some not going to heaven. There are some that are going to heaven. Now you take those who, who try to do right, who are trying to please the Lord Jesus, who, again, who read their Bible, they witness. Well, that's a minority among those that are saved, among the whole congregation. Listen, you talk about a minority of people in in the world, not just America. The minority of the people are those who are Bible believing, saved Christians that do the service of the Lord Jesus Christ as to the best of their ability. That's a minority. But Paul writes to Timothy about Christians that are rich. That's where we get the love of money is the root of all evil. That is written to rich Christians. Philemon's owner, Anemonus, is a rich man. But it's not an impossibility. But it is easier, verse 25 here it is, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. All right. And I crossed the note. So what the scholars, what the modern Bibles, and the modern Bible will say, footnote, or I should put it in there, it is a gate. In Jerusalem. It is not a gate in Jerusalem. Because if it was a gate in Jerusalem. That the, that the camels would have to duck. Or get down on their knees. Well that's a possibility. Okay. I'm fat. But there are some situations. That you can get me in. It might be a little tight. But you can get me in. There's a possibility. We're not talking about a gate in Jerusalem. We're not talking about any gate anywhere, any building, any tree, anything carved out. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a sewing needle and a hole in that sewing needle where you put the thread. 
You can put a full-size camel into the hole of that needle better than a rich man get to heaven. Now, why would they change that? Because the people that change that, the scholars that change that, is or are rich. And they do not want to give their riches to the poor. They want to give your riches to the poor, Democrats. They don't care about treasures in heaven. They want treasures in the bank. They're not going to come to Jesus. They're going to leave Jesus. They don't want to suffer, and they don't want to follow Jesus. They want to go in their worldly way with their worldly means and their worldly friends and their worldly income and take a camel go through the hole of a needle, of a sewing needle. It's better for that camel to go through there without squishing him. A full camel go through that needle, which is impossible. Impossible. But you would have better odds of that than a rich man to go to heaven. So it's not a gate. They're wrong. Like Peter S. Ruckman would say, when in doubt, Throw them out. When in doubt, throw the scholarly out. The, 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 the camel's eye of a gate is not in the text. They did a Eve. They changed the Bible. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who can be saved? Well, wait a minute, Jesus. Well, <laughs> And that impossibility, who can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, with men, it's impossible. Religion, science, education, evolution, everything that is of man, by man, is impossible. But not with God. For with God all things are possible. Now what Jesus Christ has done. Through these simple verses. He has ruled that. Listen religion can't save you. Only God can save you. Who is God? You're looking at him. Jesus. He, stand, he could have saved that rich young ruler. Religion. Religion is different from Jesus, and Jesus is different from religion. If you're saved and born again, you don't have a religion. You can be a Baptist and have religion. You can be a Catholic and have religion. Education is not a means of God. Science, government, Democrat, Republican, whatever, that's not God and that's not going to, listen, you could be the President of the United States, that's not going to save you. President of the United States may go to hell. King or queen may go to hell. There could be another government official. You can go to hell. You could be a teacher and go to hell. You could be a pastor and go to hell. You could be the richest man of all the world and go to hell. But if you come to Jesus Christ and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. That's God. Your salvation has to be of God. And the Jehovah Witnesses missed the whole thing. Because they missed the idea that that young man is speaking to Jesus. That young man is communicating with God. And the Jehovah Witnesses don't 
believe that. Again, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And he's speaking to and with Jesus. So, if you hear somebody say the eye of the needle is some gate, and it's, you know what? Just erase that thought and say it's plain and simple. An eye of a needle is a sewing needle. And that rich young ruler went away. At this point in the scripture, he went away lost. And he had riches. And he was a good, he was a fine, good young man that did right. He kept the commandments. That rich man that built up, tore everything down. He was going to build up and, and store all his things away. And he had one night and he died. Belsizer partied all night long. Next morning he was dead. Plain and simple. 